guys, welcome back. This is Sue and I'm back with a book haul, uh, compiling the books I purchased between November and December of 2015. So uh, I've got about 18 books here. Two of them are novels. The rest are manga, mainly because in December uh, Barnes & Noble had a manga sale, buy to get the third free, and I definitely wanted to um, take advantage of that and kind of fill in holes I had in various series or just kind of pick up additional uh, volumes while they were available and I had such a good deal. So I'll start with the actual books first. Um, a while back I had hauled uh, Bats of the Republic by Zachary Thomas Dodson and I thought it was a kind of an intriguing book, a strange format, like a book within a book and illustrations and it's, it starts in 1843 and continues like 300 years later. And the whole thing about it intrigued me enough to um, check out this guy's website because he's the co-founder of Featherproof Books. And flipping around on that uh, website, I came across this book by uh, Blake Butler entitled Scorch Atlas. And it's made to look like some, like an old library book that's kind of in a really bad condition, like it's been found in the rubble of something. And it's supposed to be like a, a lot of little short stories made up of um, nameless families. There's no names mentioned in any of these stories. Um, of like survival after apocalypse of some sort. Lots of weird events have taken place. Glasses rain down from the sky, there's birds talking gibberish, there's mold growing on people, lots of weird, creepy things. Um, and I don't know, it's, I've read about 40% of the book according to Goodreads, I'm on page 62, but I find it extremely depressing. It's, there's, you know, usually like an apocalyptic book of some sort, even a dystopian, you know there's, there's sort of that sense of hope at the end that something will turn around. But in this, there's just nothing. I just keep reading the same type of stuff over and over again, and it just gets more bizarre and more gross, and I don't know. I, I don't know how these stories are, if they're not connected in any way other than in their depressive state. So I, I don't know if I'm gonna continue with this, to tell you the truth. I mean, I thought it was kind of a neat, unique idea, but I don't know if the stories are, if I'm just not getting it or whatever, but I mean, the thing I like the most about it is probably the format of the book. Uh, moving on is, uh, picked up this one, The Illuminae, by uh, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It's the first book in the Illuminae Files series, and uh, it's sort of, uh, it takes place on, I want to say, an ice-encrusted planet, like at the edge of our universe, and suddenly a war breaks out between two, two mega corporations, and uh, two characters, uh, Katie and Ezra, kind of a couple that are about to break up, are now caught up in this um, war and trying to get off the planet. At the same time, a plague's breaking out that mutates, and the uh, artificial intelligences are turning against the people instead of helping them, and lots of crazy stuff going on. But it's made up of like all sorts of files and emails and schematics and interviews and medical reports, and so it's got one of those really strange uh, formats, which I just love when a book does that. I mean, even the cover alone is like a bunch of redacted files, classified, and all that. And I've heard really good reviews on this, um, mostly five stars, people raving about it, finishing it in 24 hours. So I'm really, uh, really uh, anxious to kind of read that one. So the rest are manga. Um, I picked up uh, the fourth volume of Tokyo Ghoul by Sui Ishida. I really love this story about a um, a man, uh, well, a young man that's uh, because of an accident and uh, kind of a rush surgery. He's sort of now become a half ghoul, half human, uh, and he's sort of dealing with these dual sides of his of himself and. I was sort of learning to have to deal with his ghoul side and all that, which feeds off a human. So uh, it's really intriguing. The artwork is really good, really kind of creepy, and I'm really enjoying this one. Good story. I picked up another volume of One Piece Omnibus, volume uh, 10, 11, and 12. This is by Ichiro Oda, about this crazy young man named Luffy who wants to become like the best pirate ever and go after the uh, treasure entitled One Piece. He's slowly gathering up um, a crew. I love all the characters on his crew, they're just great, and all the stories just seem to have a really good message to them. Uh, Luffy's always standing up for the underdog and everything, and uh, I just, I love the, uh, just the feel that the story's gonna be a good feel to him. And the other thing I have to say is, as much as I enjoy the artwork, some of the battle scenes, it's really hard to tell what's going on, because the characters are all kind of disjointed or morphed, like Luffy himself can stretch beyond uh, boundaries, you might say, because of... Um, eating the, the fruit of the gum gum tree. It kind of gives them the ability to stretch. Uh, lots of humor, lots of fun in it. I really enjoy that. I picked up another volume of Blue Exorcist. This is number 14 by Kato Ikato. Uh, this is about a group of x -wires. They're training to become exorcists that go off and battle demons. Uh, Rin Akamura and Yukio Akamura are um, brothers. Uh, 
Yukio's been an uh, exorcist for a while, unbeknownst to his brother Rin, uh, who actually happens to be a demon himself. Uh, that comes quite a shock to him. But he um, wants to go off and battle demons as well, and he tries to keep it a secret from his fellow students for a while. Uh, all the characters are just really great. Each one has had a chance to have a, a feature in the story so far. I have volume 13 I still have to read, and then I'll go on to volume 14. I picked up two more omnibuses for Blood Lad. This is by Yuki Kodama. I've got uh, volume 5 and volume 6. I read the two, first two omnibuses a while back, so um, and I have 3 and 4, but I kind of have to kind of refresh my memory because it's been a while since I've gotten into some of the stories. I mean, we have uh, Staz. He's a vampire who happens to be a, a lord of the underworld, uh, the demon underworld, and his brother Braz, and that's her sister, and I think that's supposed to be the father who's coming up in the story. Um, but what happens is Staz is this total otaku. He's fascinated by everything manga and video games and Japanese and suddenly this girl, sort of a living girl, falls into his world and um, something happens to her where she dies. Now he's trying to like bring her back to life so he can bring her back to her own world. But it's just a really great, great story. Lots of cool characters. The artwork is fantastic. I mean, these covers just drew me in right away. So yeah, I'll kind of have to backtrack and read at least volume two over again. Uh, I have the final volume uh, in Limit. This is volume six by Keiko Suenobo. Uh, really small little books in comparison to the other uh, manga. <laughs> and you can see. Uh, but this is sort of a Lord of the Flies type series. A bus crashes for all these students and they're trapped in this deep ravine and sort of turning on each other and lots of crazy things going on. Not a super great series, but intriguing enough that I do want to finish it off. I picked up a volume of Black Butler by Yana Toboso. This is volume 5. There's Sebastian on the cover. I have yet to read any of the series. I've heard some really good things about it. I just love the artwork. The covers just draw me in. I've got, um, I can't really see it now, but on the back there I've got the other four volumes leading up to this. So um, I don't really know much about the story other than that, but just I've heard really good things about it. I've heard it's a really good series. So someday I'll start that. I just kind of want to catch up on some of these other ones. I picked up two more volumes in um, Higurashi When They Cry. This is by Ryukisho, Ryukishio 7. I can never pronounce that. Um, and it's a quite a big series. It's um, made up of different arcs as you read along. So this is the Cotton Drifting Arc, which is two volumes, and they're numbered down here. The series is continually numbered up at the top here, so this is actually the third and fourth book in the series. And it's supposed to be some kind of a horror series. Super scary, I've heard. Um, that's about all I know about it. So someday I'll start that one too. And the final um, six volumes, actually seven, um, are in Yotsuba. And this is by Kiyohiko Azuma. And I just love this series. It is so cute, so sweet. About a young girl named Yotsuba uh, living with her father. There she is. And just her experiencing all sorts of new things. Hi, Skippy. Do you want to be part of my book haul? Yeah? Let's say hi to the camera. I think you see her nose. <laughs> Here she is. Skip. Okay, I'll just show the covers really quick on these. And if you're looking for a good um, manga series to start, uh, this is just a really sweet one. I highly recommend it. I love, love the art on it. And it's funny and just, just makes me laugh. And, and there's the final volume, volume 12. There we go. So yeah, that's my book haul. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping in, Skippy. Um, I'm sure she's getting restless. So I'll see you guys in my next video, and hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.